Good morning and a very warm welcome to today's RC Coffee Chat. Now, as many of you already know, this week we're supposed to be a week of posting no videos on YouTube. But when Stuart said or suggested come on, on live uh, to have a chat about the new Sidebinder wing, well, there are rules which are there to be bent. Uh, and that was one of them. So to, in today's RC Coffee Chat, we are being uh, joined by Stuart Warren from Hobby King to discuss the new Sidewinder, Sidewinder Wing, uh, which is being released by Durafly, and it comes out very shortly. Now, I've got a couple of questions for Stuart uh, already on the Durafly Sidewinder Racer FPV Wing, uh, and I'm sure you've probably got some questions as well. Now, give you a heads up, this morning is only a very quick chat. We've only got a 30 minute window with Stuart, uh, and also note this is a live event. So those of you which have been and joined us live, there is a chat box to the right hand side of the screen. And if you hit refresh, the chat box should appear for you if it's not appearing for you. And of course, if you are watching the recorded version, uh, then you can ask any questions which you've got in the comments section underneath this video. Now, just like you, I'm super excited to, with, to, for Stuart to be here with us, uh, and I've got a collection of questions to ask him about the Sidewinder wing. So, uh, Stuart, over to you, sir. Uh, are you feeling better now? Because in the announcement daily, you were suffering quite badly from a cold, weren't you? Um, you tell me. I feel like I'm still suffering. And certainly my voice is probably in the ultra sexy mode right now. I'm quite husky. <laughs> It's rather husky. Uh, yeah. Now, so, Stuart, um, go on. I sound bad, but I feel fine. But thank okay. you for asking. Okay, so number one, thank you for joining us this morning, or it's this afternoon now with you. Uh, Stuart, you, we just had a quick chat, and apologies for being late by a couple of moments, but uh, we, we just discovered that it's not a two-piece wing, it's a one-piece wing. Yeah, it's one piece, uh, just over one meter. Um, I'm not sure if I even, I guess I didn't mention that in the announcement daily. Um, but yeah, it's, it is a one piece wing. Um, I did consider a two piece wing, but, um, I wanted to remove complication. Um, and I also wanted to avoid weak spots. You know, the best wings out there are those solid one piece wings. Look at like the sweep wings and the right wings that they're mm -hmm. one piece, right? Mm -hmm. Again, and they're built solid. Um, so I wanted to work towards that uh, and what it's enabled us to do. You can probably see if I hold it up that we've got carbon running all the way through the wing and it's molded in to the wing um, as one piece. So out the mold, it's just this big piece of foam with carbon in it, which is great because it's really good for, for strength and rigidity. And the way that I saved by not having a, a wing joining system, which would require plastic parts and everything else, not only reduces cost of the model for, the, for you guys, mm -hmm. but um, also saves weight. And that means there's some headroom for me to play around with uh, the all important density of the foam. Uh, I saw a lot of people were, were maybe a little concerned or apprehensive that it was EPO and not EPP. And as I said, this is essentially the EF Extra as a wing and you know, for the speed it can attain, and the flight performance it has, and the durability of the EF Extra for an EPO model is pretty good, goddamn good. And mm -hmm. you'll get that same kind of level with the um, Sidewinder. Thank you, Michael. However, at this stage, at the very, very late stage, I can still play around with the density. So I'm gonna let you guys know. I'm actually, um, I've got a, a more dense version coming in the next couple of weeks, or if you requested it a few weeks ago. Yeah. It will add about 20% then to the all-up weight of the foam, that's the, the, with every foam you add about twenty percent. Um, but because I've saved weight by not having that wing joining system, for example, I may well be able to get away with it. So it'll be a slightly heavier model, um, and it will have a higher wing loading. But it flies so well anyway that I could well get away with it. And if I can, I will. And then what you guys will have, will have you'll have the best foam available for the sidewinder. Yeah, and of course, if it's a more denser foam, that means that it's more robust for us. So um, if we hit something in our travels with one, uh, it's more likely to stay together. Is that a fair summary? Exactly. I'm just trying to, rather than just holding this like a, an idiot, I think I just have to hold it like an idiot. Sorry. 
Well, I tell you, while you've got it in your hands, the one curiosity is that can we have a look in the video transmitter bay? Uh, because I know you did the work with the two antennas either side, but can yeah. we have a look in the video transmitter bay to see maybe if we put a side mounted uh, uh, antenna in there instead and maybe yeah. reduce the requirement for the extra antenna? Well, this is the um, this is the bay here, and this is the, the RX bay here. It's just got two small self-tapping screws. Or if if you want to be really quick at the field, you can just tape it down with blender or something like that. Mm -hmm. Just take the last remaining screw out. I've already removed the other one. It's this bay here. You can see it. So the Durify logo it also doubles as cooling as well. And what you can see there, that's a Onway 600 uh, milliwatts VTX. And that's the fat sharp um, clover leaf antenna mm -hmm. bent at 90 degrees towards the end. What I actually like to do, I like to cut down my own aerials. I haven't done it with this one. Uh, and by cutting it down, I, I don't lose any range, but I just get a lower profile. So I can actually have this, this cover pretty much flush with this hole here. And that, what I found in testing, negates the need for this dummy one uh, because the adverse shore is, is pretty much neg negligible or the uh, excessive drag on that side. So there's plenty of room in there for the standard uh, 5.8 uh, VTX. It was designed initially to fit a uh, Fat Shark uh, 5 and 600. Mm -hmm. uh, well, they're, they're standard size VTXs, but our smaller ones fit in there, obviously. And this is the slightly, this is the one in between the uh, Quantum ones and the Fat Shark ones. This is one of the Onway ones. And there will be a, just take these parts out. I keep my spare parts in the cockpit for when I need to test next. I just those yeah, out. you'd be surprised how many models I do that with. Him. It's like just keep the antenna in the battery bay, yeah, and exactly then right. when you hit the flight line, exactly. all the parts are there. Exactly. Um, and this has got a um, a JST on the uh, speed controller, meaning you don't need to change your balance tab uh, if you if you were using a balance tab power adapter, um, mm -hmm. depending on your setup, because most VTXs can run anything from two to six S. So you just plug your LiPo in. And it's this connection via the speed controller and Bob's your uncle. Um, so that's the essential, that's essentially the, the VTX bay. Is that enough for you guys? Do you guys want to see more of that? Should I hold it there for a second? I'll take it out completely, look, you can see it. Yeah, that's brilliant. That's absolutely brilliant. Yeah. So uh, a couple things which you picked up there. Number one, it's a one-piece wing. Number two, that video yeah. transmitter bay is actually designed for a um, larger uh, FPV transmitter, one of the um, Immersion RC, I'm guessing we'll fit, yeah. Yeah. fit one of those in there easily. Uh, with the actual antenna, if again, you've got a plastic cover on top of that. I'm, I'm a big fan of the Armour Way um, open. Oh, uh, one, yeah, I really like those actually, the blue ones. Yeah, good. yeah I've only ever killed two so far, uh, both rear end and a quad uh, on the grains. It, it um, happens to the best of us, I'm sure. Um, so that I've, I've, got, I've got one on the other sample, and I actually broke one of the antennas um, <laughs> because that's how hard we like to test them. Brilliant. Uh, and the, the, the little added touch of the JST lead is a nice touch, so that simplifies wiring. So you don't have to, like you said, you don't have to go on and hijack your balance lead. Uh, so that maybe you want to put a GPS sensor um, and yep. use that to off, the, off the lead, for example, or even just a straightforward battery in the morning. Uh, limit, which is something which I'm running into challenges with the EF Extra, is that it won't be long until I've killed a pair of um, graphing batteries and that thing. Um, from you said you were going through them. Uh, yeah, that, that one of them's I mean, only been here a week, and I've had it down to three volts um, more than once. If you get so, a programming card, you can set the uh, LVC on that to be a bit more friendly. <laughs> yeah, I should really do that and set up the alert on the uh, transmitter. Right, anyway, let's get ourselves back onto the Sidewinder. Um, I've got a couple of questions here for you. Uh, so uh, the, the pr production motor KV, you mentioned it was similar to the original EF uh, X racer. So we're guessing around 2300 KV. Uh, yeah, I, I can't find it in my notes and I've got so many motors going around in my head, but it's around yeah, 22, uh, 2300 KV on that. But even that, um, I'm still doing some final tweaks to that, so that will probably change just a little. Same as prop size, I'm currently running a 5x4.5. Five five. Um, just uh, tomorrow, I'm going to try just uh, variations of that prop on 4S. 
and mm. variations of a six inch on um, 3S. Mm -hmm. Cool beans. Yeah, I know from my previous experience a 50 50 ball nose prop, it draws the amps. Yeah. But thrust is crazy. Uh, yeah. on them. Okay, uh, another question which I had here was the fifth color. So we've got a collection of colors, which, um, and again, it comes as a naked wing uh, and mm -hmm. it's pure white, and we can put stickers on them if we desire, which we get five. Oh, yeah, I mean, these ones, um, these black ones that you see here, uh, the, the bottom side, they'll come applied, as will the markings, but they can. Uh, they can be removed with relative ease without damaging the foam surface either. Um, but the coloured ones will be supplied and essentially you pick your own colour out of those five or six colours that are there. And in addition to that, this is just a blank white circle and you add one of the race numbers that we've provided in the box. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And there is red, uh, blue, fluoro, green, yellow and silver. And so silver is the fifth color. Yeah, it was a little bit difficult to work out the actual color of it on the uh, announcement. Uh, uh, yeah, our, our colors are terrible in the daily studio. They're really crap, to be fair. Yeah, really you've crap. got an awful lot of lighting going in in there. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's too much. We're, we're playing with it. Cool beans, cool beans. Um, now, you, we mentioned about the crash kit. Now, this is a one-piece wing, so what on earth is in the crash kit? Is it just the plastic components? Is there some slugs of foam uh, for, like, the leading edge? What, what kind of things are included in that? Uh, well, it's essentially uh, all the individual foam and plastic components um, without any electronics. So I guess you could just call it a kit, but it's essentially all the things you would you want for a crash kit. Now, we, we're going to separate the crash kit out as well. It won't just be everything. If you want individual parts like the fins, or it's got um, these, the leading edge, is a, um, it's got a plastic cover on the leading edge. Now, that's uh, included in the box, and you glue it on if you wish. I know with some race classes, it's, um, I don't think plastic leading edges are allowed. Um, but in most cases, people will want to fly with this because I was flying it today and I landed in some some tall, quite firm grass, and like lots of twigs and stuff. Mm -hmm. And it just went for it like a, like a what's it called, um, a sickle. It just went straight for it. Uh, so the, the reinforced leading edge, you can see it. Maybe you guys can see it there. It's going to be white when it's, when it's finished, not clear. But that really, really helps. Um, so those components will be be provided both individually and then as a one bulk deal in this crash kit yeah yeah and again i'm just thinking realistically those of us which won't actually be flying him in a race having like the leading edge protectors is going to come in super handy uh even i'm just thinking it helps with mud for number one uh yeah. and also yeah. one of the farms which we fly at as well that it's different grass lengths and you could be putting up with um, the, the remnants of uh, um, straw. Uh, you've also got corn, which has been growing in those fields as well. So having something yeah, that just protects them. After they harvest, like landing on that stubble is the most brutal of things on foam, foam models. Um, so for this, if you approach it at the right angle, it wouldn't be a problem. In fact, we flew one into uh, like a wide wire fence and all it did was bounce off the fence because the wire couldn't penetrate the wing. Because um, you can, that's, that's the leading edge right there. So it just hit it and bounced back. Um, there was actual no damage to the, the wing because the wire wasn't able to penetrate. Um, so it should be a real plus. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, unfortunately I know from experience what um, barbed wire and wire fences do to wings uh, from slopes or on adventures. Um, no, Stuart, you mentioned, uh, did you have that slow-mo footage uh, on your desk? I do know. Yeah, I do know. If you want to prepare the good people, I will... Um, cool, Bean. So, Stuart's got some, yeah, Stuart's got some uh, slow-mo footage uh, of the Sidewinder wing, which you can share with us. Uh, obviously, do note this is being broadcast across two different continents, and if the image quality is not particularly great, uh, we obviously do apologize for that and I'm sure we'll see uh, the full HD version um, from Stuart at a later point as well but um, Stuart was kind of excited about having 
uh, some slow-mo footage of the wing. Oh, another thing while Stuart's just getting himself, himself set up there uh, is that if you go back to the announcement daily, there are several points when you, the uh, wing actually goes up into the sky and you can actually see through the model and you'll see the arrangement of the spars in the wing as well. Those of you which are curious, and I know that you mentioned in the live chat here in the background about uh, can Matt add more carbon to it? Uh, the, the Oh, there we go. Give me a, let me be quiet a moment. Stu, can you just say something so it switches to your camera? Yeah, this is me just holding it, holding it up to the light. I don't need you guys. It's better. I'm not sure how this is going to work. Oh, there you go. It works quite well, actually. So you can see all different sorts of carbon in there. Also, it's got a full um, PVC belly pan as well. So there's a full, full plastic skid pan. Oh, that reminds me. How is how is the bottom ESC cover working out? Because I know with the EF Extra is that that front scoop on the front just fills up a mud every single time. Is that shown any signs of picking up debris in there? I've got a tiny bit of grass in there. Remember, I was flying in long grass. It is scooped to, to get to suck air in. But what you've got to remember is that this these sit lower than the, the hatch, so they tend to keep it out the, out the crap. Brilliant, absolutely brilliant. I have to ask that question because uh, I'm yeah, sure. kit includes a screwdriver now for the EF extra just to pick the mud out the front, even it doesn't matter how much you flare it. Um, so that yeah, it's it's got torsional spars, it's got um cross section spars, um, longer ons, carbon in the aider ons, so it's it's carboned up the yin yang. <laughs> Good lad, it sounds like my kind of model. <laughs> Uh, let's uh, and then of course you've got the reinforcing plastics as well. Uh, shall I share screen now? Should we give this a go? Yeah, please do, please do. Okay. Uh, desktop start. So this is Steve here. Um, he's our new Durafly brand manager. Can you guys probably see him there? Um, there's your chat. So I yes. don't know if you guys. Yeah, can... I was going to say, do you want to minimize the my head in there, and yeah. then it shouldn't like. There we go. Them. Is that good? Yeah, but it is, and I'll be quiet now. So, Stuart, if you want to say something, it'll flip across to your screen. Yeah, right. so, so this is all in slow-mo, pretty much. You can see the LED, the test LED working there. It still needs refining. You can see how easily it launched. That's on half throttle, and I was launching it myself after that all afternoon. This was the first flight, so we had to trim it. Uh, it launches really, really easily. A uh, high rate on elevator for launching, and then as soon as you're up, just um, just go down to middle. Then I started getting a bit cheeky, and I was flying through these. Um, what do you call them? Stands. It's a nice slow mo shot of that. That was um, a little nerve wracking, to be fair. But it's it's a very confidence inspiring wing. And then we've got just a little bit more. I just wanted to give you guys a little bit of a tease on the, the footage. Our cameraman really likes his slow-mo stuff. There I am hitting the uh, permanent air gate. And there's the guys. Vertical, half roll down. And I think I'm just coming to land at this point. Yeah, I think that's about it, isn't it? Let's have a look. See if there's any more. Oh, it's just a landing. Yeah, cool beans. It does look pretty stable in the sky as well. There, there was an oddity yeah. between the, the, the video footage um, in the announcement. Well, yeah. Bit of a rough landing there, but it, she's fine. <laughs> Sorry, you were saying? I, I did notice that there was, um, that there was a difference between the FPV footage, which showed it you, you had some um, movement in height, which I'm guessing actually was probably your stick input. Uh, and then when you actually saw the slow slow mo version back, is as you were going through the the stands, is it, it just came through completely straight? Um, the, uh, sorry, the, what, you mean in this one here? Was there was there DVR on this, or was it all pure? No, no, it was in the announcement daily. You had a you had the FPV when you were shooting through the stands, and the, I'm, I'm guessing yeah. it was actually stick input as you were trying to just like gauge, make sure yeah, that, stuff it, don't stuff it. Well, it was a bit of that, but also that was a pre production. That was an earlier sample. Mm -hmm. um, the one that you saw in the slow-mo was this one we were flying today. So this is an improved version of that. And I've managed to 
pretty much get rid of all the pitch hop with this compared to even the previous sample. Um, that's why when I do these announcements, I'm always like, I'm always like, guys, please note this is not the final product. I'm just very excited to tell you about it, mm -hmm. and that's where it comes from. Outstanding. Now, Stuart, I'm very aware of time, uh, and you, um, you, you're only available for us for half an hour this morning. Uh, there is uh, a comment which came up. Uh, in the chat from uh, Jeff from Seven Demo Seven, just wanted to say, and I'm sure this is from everybody else, is just to say a big thank you uh, to Stuart for bringing us uh, this chat and this information this morning. When you're obviously not feeling uh, in tip-top condition, I know that you're in a big rush uh, right now um, because you're leaving the Hobby King shortly. Yeah. But, um, for all I'm of us, hurdle. thank you. Uh, in short, and for, well, thank you to him. I mean, I, I was watching just some of these uh, bigger wing videos just the other night. Very, very, very nice to see, and it's inspired me to to go out and get some big wings myself uh, when I get back to the UK. Fantastic. So thank you for that, guys. Indeed, and indeed. No. Sure. Be before we wrap up, two um, obvious two uh, questions: is that is there any better idea on launch date for the Sidewinder? Um, it's going into production very, very soon. I would expect this to be a. Uh, early summer release so look around may uh, may time maybe mm -hmm. a little later maybe a little sooner depends on all kinds of different things that i can't have as much control over as i as i had hoped but mm -hmm. um the, the reason you're probably seeing this and a few others a little earlier than normal is simply because i really want to make sure i tell you about them before i leave because these are my babies so i i'm very proud of them and i want to um i want to make sure they get the attention they deserve uh because i think they're quite nice Fantastic. Yeah, obviously you spent a lot of time, effort, and energy working on them, and which is glaringly apparent from what we've seen today. So uh, I assume that there are more models on the way out shortly uh, at some point. Yes, uh, it's it's a busy week. In fact, um, because the the week ends, March starts midweek, so my actual week, my actual final week, isn't until next week. Uh, I think there was some confusion before where this was my last week. This is my last full week, but I'll still be here next week. So this week and the, the part, most of next week, you'll see even more model announcements coming. Ooh, fantastic. I'm looking forward to that. So Stuart, if there is any hint of uh, worthy mention, which you feel that the Rag the Nuts of community might be interested in, there's a, an open invitation to come back and join oh. us. Uh, to discuss it in, in a more relaxed format. Uh, so the, the invite is there. Uh, and obviously, if Steve later on uh, fancies coming on for like just a formal chat, he's more than welcome, of yeah. course. Um, so we mentioned the launch date around May, something like that. You mentioned that it needs to go into production. And you also mentioned about the foam density or something that you want to look at uh, as well. Um, price point is another big one. Um, do we have a, a rough idea on the price point for these? I have a rough idea in that um, it's a similar size, just in layman terms, it's a similar size to an EF Extra, uh, similar components, although there are less components. Uh, I wouldn't imagine it would be any more than, or certainly wouldn't imagine it would be any more than an EF Extra. Um, probably, most likely, a little bit less than an EF Extra, just because there's there's less to it. There's only two servos as opposed to four, for example. Yeah. Um, so yeah, just a, a little less than the EF Extra, I should think, in the in the plug-and-fly format. And we hope to be able to offer packages as well, where you can have like a plug-and-fly plus version, um, where we would have one of our, uh, one of the choice of cameras pre-installed, one of our VTXs pre-installed, stuff like that. Oh, nice. Oh, that has actually just led me to one ad hoc question, which I didn't put in my notes. Apologies. Uh, the LED uh, bar, the strip, so you've got three LEDs at the back, which you mentioned right now is only doing red, green, and blue, uh, and it will do the yellow colors uh, at a later date. How's the switching doing? Is it just a push button at the back? Uh, yeah, it's a push button, but it's with a memory. So I haven't got my transmitter with me, but I'm sure this is going to be perfectly safe. Um, you can see it flashing randomly there, and um, it's a push button, and it's a push button with a memory, uh, and it stores your color and your setting. There's going to be three or four different speeds, so you can have slow pulsing, then you have fast stroking, then you can just have on, and then there's going to be five different colors to choose from, and each color will um, 
will be representative of the color that you choose to stick on there. So you'd have the red LED selected for red, green for green, and so on and so forth. Uh, and they're going to be brighter than this as well. Um, let's see if I can. Well, anyway, this is just a sample that I made up myself, so it's a bit crass. But you get the idea with this one. And the idea yeah. is that when you're racing along, that you're, you're able to see, okay, there's red five, there's yellow seven. Uh, and I know where I am in the, in the race kind of thing. It's a bit of a gimmick, but it's kind of cool. And then you've got yeah, the ones on the wingtips as well. It is kind of cool. Let's be fair here. And um, I, I can see some guys at a later date changing that over so that they can change it on their transmitter just to confuse their flying buddies. Uh, so they go from, say, yellow to blue to red uh, as they're flying along just to confuse their mates. Like I can see that happening in the future. Um, that's what's that? 35, 28 LEDs. Will, will, will it end up as 50 50, which are the brighter ones? Um, do we know what LED type's going to be on the back of there? Uh, it's not confirmed yet. I'm just, I'm still uh, in the final stages of approving, but it, it'll be, um, it'll be suitable for the intended purpose. Cool beans, cool beans. Um, and uh, and then just while we're here, um, whilst I got it open, sorry. Um, some people were asking about batteries. This is a 2200 4S. You can see. Um, I always like to shorten my cables anyway with tight models. But you can still just see there's still quite a bit of room. There, there's also a plate missing here. There's going to be a, like a protective plate between the camera and the battery um, to to save the the camera as and when it uh, might be needed. Uh, so you can actually fit up to a 2400 uh, three cell or uh, 18 to 2200 four cell in there. It's okay, really and that's nice the on the base battery. batteries. Is that right? So obviously, if it's yeah, a and, and, uh, and heavier, aren't they? Yeah, the graphene 2200 4S will fit in there. It's just a bit tight. Actually, the 1800 graphene 65C is really, really good. And I was flying that, and I was getting, with very, with mixed throttle use, I got uh, nine minutes this morning on that. Hey, that's um, not bad going at all. No, that wasn't, that wasn't full out, and it might not be the final prop, but um, you could go balls to the wall and probably get at least like four or five minutes on that pack. Uh, and uh, this current configuration. So yeah, not bad at all. Not bad at all. Not bad at all. So I, Stuart, I think that's perfect time for us to finish up upon. Um, and uh, on behalf of everybody here uh, live, and of course, if you're watching the recorded version too, um, we'd like to say thank you uh, for giving us this insight into the Sidewinder Wing. It does look really, really cool. Uh, I was actually shocked, and then we, me and Stuart had a little chat just before, and, and I thought it was going to be a two-piece. No. It's a one-piece wing, so obviously box size is going to be much bigger uh, in there. But yeah. we get strength, and you and because of the weight, you, like you said at the beginning, the the the, the weight which is saved in not using components to attach the two halves together, prob uh, means that we can potentially have a different density of foam uh, to make it more um, uh, mat resistant uh, for the unscheduled landings, which we have from time to time. Uh, there's pros and cons. Um, but either way, um, you'll get something when it comes to market that um, I'm sure you guys will be really pleased with. Fantastic. So uh, for myself and, of course, everybody else here, Stuart, thank you for giving this insight this morning. Uh, if you have... <laughs> thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. So if you have enjoyed uh, today's RC Coffee Chat, do us a favor, do Stuart a favor. Uh, press the thumbs up button underneath this video. Uh, of course, if you're not already subscribed yet, hit the red button underneath. Uh, we do normally run RC Coffee Chats every single day, but this week was supposed to be a week of drought, so just an experiment which we're trying. Uh, but normally we post a video every single day. Uh, and on that note, there's nothing more other than to say thank you. So, Stuart, big thank you to you, sir, and uh, we'll see you again shortly. Bye. Bye-bye. Cheerios.